Welcome back to the show, chefs. We are excited to be back. Uh, last week's episode, we were talking with Cody Pettengill about how he does over 200,000 in revenue every year in a small town in North Dakota. But this year, we're coming back and we are doing the Written by You series. And just in advance, we're gonna apologize for when it gets to like the 40 minute mark. Uh, we really go off the rails. We're calling this one uh, Broken Dresses, for lack of a better term, Broken Dresses and the Flat Earth. So without further ado, let's cook. Good afternoon, Jacob. How are we doing? Good afternoon, Nathan. How are we? Doing so good. Doing great. Just went and got a little walk, fresh air, ready nice. to go. Nice. Yeah, this weather's been nice. Oh, yeah. For the first week in the whole year, we finally have spring. Yeah, very nice. Love to see it. We got some, uh, got some good weddings planned this summer. Yeah. Uh, as everyone kind of gears into busy season, I feel like. Um, our July is empty, though. Or no, we have a few. Yeah, we have a couple. I feel like this is an interesting summer compared to most summers. Right. Like usually we're crazy swamped, and I feel like this year it was like the spring and the fall, and the summer's kind of kind of a chill slower season. Yeah. 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 That'll be nice. We uh, Are we allowed to talk about the wedding we booked? Uh, no, yeah. Okay. Well, can we say we at least booked a really cool wedding? Yeah, we booked yeah, a cool wedding. Yeah, we booked a cool <laughs> wedding for next year. <laughs> next April. Oh, yeah. Next April. So. And you guys will get to see behind the scenes of it. Yeah. It's going to be a big one. Portfolio piece for sure. It shouldn't be an NDA. I don't think so, right? I don't think so. No. Yeah. But there's a lot of really yeah, wanna, cool people I want to wait until it's like for sure, for right. sure. I'm sending off the contract after this call. Yeah. So, um, Hey, guys, just another, another example of relationships with the planner paying off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is just a... Uh, yeah, I guess we can't say too much. <laughs> we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait. just working with a planner. That's it. That is yeah. all we ever did. Can't wait for that one. Yep. Yeah, me too. But you guys, today we're we're back with more written by you. So I guess I should say you're back. Yeah. <laughs> on the episode. Um, also, just like we got so much love on Cody's episode last Seriously. week. Seriously. So you guys, the people spoke. We got so many comments and so many views, and the people spoke. And uh, and Nate's already been scheduling uh, a great lineup of guest chefs on the kitchen coming soon. The sous so, uh, chefs. Yeah, yeah, so thank you for all your support. We're excited for this next chapter of The Kitchen. Yeah, something uh, something that's going to be kind of the aim of The Kitchen is uh, what's what we really liked about Cody was that, you know, Cody is very talented. He's, he's a very smart dude. He's good at what he does, but he's also very relatable, right? He's not one of these guys mm -hmm. who's been doing it for 10, 20 years, who's filming Ray Roman right. type weddings. He's just a dude, just like all of us, who's killing it. He, or in his words, he's crushing it, right? And, um, yeah, so I think for this podcast, we'd love to bring on, yeah, we, we're going to bring on some of the heavy hitters, right? 31 films, Larev, Ray Roman, if we can, things like that. But honestly, yeah. we just want to keep it relatable. We want to just bring on people yeah. who are just like us, who are just finding little ways yeah. to, to kill it every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Cody, what, four years in and he's pretty much monopolized his area. Crazy. Um, and he's. I mean, he calls them their, his leading competitor, but he's he's doing way more weddings than they are. So I don't even know if they're yeah if it's really his leading competitor. But um, yeah, I like that. We we want you guys to feel seen mm -hmm. on this podcast. So we're gonna we're gonna try bringing a, a wide range of uh, speakers. So we're excited. It's gonna be a fun gonna be a fun year. After since we're now thirty episodes deep, which is awesome. That's wild. Um, but yeah, it, it admits the educational direction we want to take this. We're also gonna sprinkle in some of these crazy, out-of-pocket, wild, written-by-you stories <laughs> of weddings that you guys have submitted. <laughs> and uh, we've already skimmed through these ones today, and uh, this episode will not disappoint. Uh -uh. <laughs> this is the first time um, we've ever had a, a yes. both sides of the story from the lead shooter and the second shooter being told. So yeah. we're getting the full yeah. story here on one of them. Yeah, we're getting perspective, you guys. Um, so if you guys want to submit your stories, we'll link that below. But without further ado, I'm going to let Nate take it off. All right. <clears throat> Kicking it off with the story. 
here we go. And is this the part two story? Or am yep. I going to read the second Yep, this is, this is the okay. part two story. So what I'm about to read is from a videographer. I might add the lead videographer. And this is okay. under the awkward moments category. Okay. Buckle up. So this is, again, lead, lead videographer here. So my assistant and I, we were filming a fall wedding in good old Nebraska. The bride's mother was helping her get in her dress. During the zipping of the dress, the mom broke the zipper. The bride had a minor uh -oh. freak out, but mom said she could just hook it up and it would be fine. Then during doing that, she broke the hook. So the bride literally had no way to secure her dress on. And at this point, the bride now has a major freak out. Being a good lead videographer, I offered to run to the office building of the venue to see if there was a sewing kit of some sort. While I'm gone, I guess all the fun happened. The photographer said that maybe we could fix the zipper if we were able to get it back on the track. They were having issues because it was tight fitting. So my second shooter then said, quote, maybe it would be easier if the dress wasn't on. So there in front of her mom, sister, the tog, <laughs> the photog, I guess, the photographer, the tog, the tog. okay, the bride, we're going to make, make hats for the photographers that just calls togs. the tog. Okay, yeah. so the bride is there in front of her mom, sister, the tog, and the second shooter, and she just drops the dress, wearing basically nothing underneath. The t <laughs> I'm loving the tog. The tog then yeah. yells, quote, hell yeah, girl, get naked. My second being, mm. a very helpful guy with big hands, offered to try and fix the zipper, and while doing so, the bride came over and kneeled right beside him with, <laughs> with it all hanging out. He had no idea... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Yeah, you read that right. I'll, I'll save my comments yeah, 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 yeah. for later. Okay, bride came over, just butt naked, kneeled right beside him with it all hanging out. He had no idea what to do, but managed to keep working on the dress, and he got the zipper fixed. By the time I arrived back with the sewing kit, they had the dress back on and zipped up. Everyone with red faces, I then asked, what did I miss? <laughs> wow, great writing, beautiful writing on that. Just a little bit. You just missed a few things. You missed... You missed, uh, you missed an adult scene that sounds like yeah you missed yeah wow okay 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 so she's she, with it all hanging out <laughs> is this episode about to be called bridal boobs i think so <laughs> i think that's what we're gonna call it the bride <laughs> uh well should we give commentary on this or should we go to to part two for the full scene and then talk about it okay so is part two so part two is from my okay, from the from, from the, the the second shooter's perspective, and that's the guy two fixing it. That's two submissions, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the same okay. story, okay. just from the second videographer's point of view. Okay, I'll read this and then we'll give commentary because okay. who knows? Okay, because I have so many questions and so much right. things to say. All right, so this is a story coming from a male videographer, and I believe the other guy I was shooting with submitted the story as well. So you get this from two sides. We were shooting some getting ready shots of the bride and a bridesmaids. They were getting ready in a cabin that had a bed and chairs in it. Details that will be important later. <laughs> I don't know if I want to read this. Okay. <laughs> it came time for the bride to get into her dress. As we always do, we step out of the room to let her change and have someone tell us when she is covered up so we can come in to get the zip up button shot. With the bride and her mom, with the bride and her mom, we get the green light that she's good to go. Everyone's decent. And we come back in and start shooting. As the bride's mom is zipping the zipper, the zipper comes off the rails. The bride lets out a huge gasp and starts to panic. The photographer, the other videographer, and myself try to help assure her that this is going to be okay. A phone call gets made to the venue, and they have a sewing kit at the main building that is about five minutes away from the cabin that we are in. The other videographer, the lead, offers to run up there to get it, leaving me, the photographer, the bride, her mom, and a bridesmaids or two in the cabin. Someone says, there is a clasp at the top of the dress. Why don't we have the mom clip that to get the shot while we wait for the sewing kit? So we go to do that. Pop goes the clasp. Another huge gasp from the bride, and she is now in a full panic. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> Again, doing our best to reassure her, we say we can try to get the zipper back on while, she wait, while we wait for the sewing kit. A bridesmaid and her mom attempt to do this, but they decide that they are not strong enough to hold the dress together. I am asked to come help hold the dress together at the bottom of the zipper, right on the bride's butt, basically. <laughs> uh, we try for a minute, and my thought was to get out of this awkward situation, and my thought to get out of this awkward situation, because you're basically holding her butt, <laughs> was to suggest that I step out, she take the dress off, 
put her other clothes back on, and we work on the zipper without her in the dress. I believe my exact words to the bride were, it might be easier if you took the dress <laughs> off. <laughs> and before I could even say, I'll step out of the room, the dress hits the floor. <laughs> the bride is naked right in front of me. And the moment the photographer, who is next to me, says, and I quote, Hell yeah, girl, get naked. <laughs> the bride goes to a chair and covers her body with a pillow. At that moment, I picked up the dress and moved it to the bed in this cabin, and I got to work trying to get the zipper back on the rail. At some point, the bride must have decided she didn't care she was naked, because before I was done, <laughs> she kneeled next to me as we both worked on getting the zipper back on the rail. We were able to get it back on. She got dressed and got married that day. <laughs> I love that we uh, <laughs> throw that in there. She did give me a hug at the end of the night and thanked me for my help. I had to pause there for context <laughs> on when you think that Sorry, hug happened. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I will forever have burned in my brain the sound of photographer saying, hell yeah, girl, get naked. <laughs> Um, Thank goodness, yeah, the hug happened at the end of the night because I was reading. I was like, oh, wait, what? Yeah, what? I had to pause. I had to pause. <laughs> a couple things. Uh, you know, props to this woman for having confidence, right? right? Letting it all hang out. Right. Working with male videographers. Sounds like the photographer was a female based on the hell yeah, girl, get naked. Yeah. I think if a man yelled that, it'd be uh, harassment. They be in jail. Yep. Um, absolutely. <laughs> um, but then, okay, so a couple things. The. Nathan, would you? Would I stay in the room? No, do? I know, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> if she's, if okay, she's okay. Well, let me throw, let me throw a hypothetical at you. Okay, then. Let me throw, throw a hypothetical. You're at like, me. I okay, love we should just, we should get the stress off, and, and then I'll help fix it. Boom! It drops to the floor. Mm. And I'm just standing. Oh, what do you do? Ooh, see, I'm, I'm. She's just butt naked. Again, I'd probably just say, hey, all right, I'm gonna step out real quick. Uh, I'm gonna just get in contact with the lead videographer, uh, whatever. Let's say their name is Jackson. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Jackson real quick, make sure everything's all good to go. Uh, I'll step out, get some shots. I'll be back in a couple minutes when. <laughs> I don't know how I'd finish that sentence when you're. But the... <laughs> uh, but I can't when you're see decent. Your <laughs> when you're decent, <laughs> just use that blanket statement. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, I would prefer not to be in the room, but it sounded like he was just kind of tossed into the situation. And I love the image of him from the right. lead videographer. What they said was just like a, a big man, just a big dude, big hands. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to work on this little zipper. Which, <laughs> which is my next question. Don't you think the person with the smaller daintier hand should work on the zipper? Right. In my mind, it's like something that like a small hand person should do. Yeah. What was the, what, so I think it's funny that they kind of assigned him to fix the dress. Yeah. What was the, what was the tog doing? Huh? What was she doing? And then what were the bridesmaids thinking? Like, there's a lot the of mom, people. Like, uh, my daughter is naked in front of these men. <laughs> Maybe she shouldn't be. <laughs> there's a lot of people in this room. I would like to think that the male videographer with the big husky hands doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Right. Now, I bet we're gonna get some comments, man. You guys are just prudes. Uh, yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we are two happily married prudes <laughs> who do not want to be a part of that moment with people. We'd rather. Uh, shield our eyes and run into a wall <laughs> than uh, then have to be a part of that situation. Just full Buddy the Elf. Man. Yeah, that's uh, what I was thinking. Uh, that's a funny story. She just Off dropped it. At least. Well, Would you consider this a sexual harassment clause? F uh, sexual harassment towards the videographer? Or what? I mean, I guess it was willing, wasn't it? He willingly stayed in the room. He willingly... I, I, and... and, and for all intents and purposes, he suggested it. Yeah, that was going to be my first point. Is I would <laughs> I wouldn't have suggested that. He <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> we'll get this fixed. It'll I would have fine. prefaced it first. <laughs> yeah, flip the, yeah, I the said, sentence I said, structure. I'm going to step out of the room. Maybe it's be easier when the dress is off. Right. Instead flip. of saying, "Let's get this dress off you," I'm going to step out of the room. Yeah, you can't let those sentences you gotta, breathe. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta flip the sentence structure. Hey, I'm gonna head out. Uh, yeah. Maybe take off the dress and work. I'll be back in. <laughs> Not hey. Yeah, you should take off the dress. Oh, I'll, I'll step out yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love, I love the detail that never really came back to haunt him. But he said like there was a bed the in bed the couch, in the chairs. and that they'll, that'd be important later. Because now I'm just like picturing. Like I'm, that played no <laughs> significance in the story. I'm picturing me like, oh, dress is ripped. I'm going to go get a sewing kit, take a five-minute break. 
Nate, you got this? Great. I head out. And then I just love the image of me walking back into the bridal suite. And then I just see you by just a bed with a naked woman <laughs> and you're fixing her dress. Just pale face. And you're just going, what the actual is going what on? What just happened here? <laughs> and the photographer being just useless other than just yelling. Yeah. Yeah, then pulling up my phone, taking a picture, sending it to your wife and saying, (laughs) uh, uh, Kayla, uh, Uh, she listens to every episode. I love you. It would never, it would never happen. Gosh, that is so funny. No, no, it would, that would never, that situation would never happen. I'm I'm actually shocked though. I'm actually shocked from starting this podcast. How many like butt naked stories there have been from the bride and the bridesmaids happening to the videographers. We've never even come close. Well, one time, (laughs) one time, but (laughs) it was an easy turndown. It was just, oh yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Might we'll be fine. Right. But usually I. Well, okay, yeah. I've never seen it. It's never happened abruptly like this. It's always been like a, a build up where I have definitely have time to say no thanks. Right. This was like a dress dropped like in a movie, you know. And I mean, when you command someone like take off your dress and she does, don't be surprised when you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Change how you word it. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, we're gonna put that's together. That's a crazy story. Uh, we're gonna put together a guide like- of. Uh, wedding yep. day conversations, and one of them is going to be just the sentence structure. I'm going to step out of the room. Maybe it'd be easier if you just take yeah. it off. I'll come back in ten minutes. That's going to be what yeah, to, to say. How to kindly ask your brides to get undressed. <laughs> what to say when everything goes wrong with the bride getting in her dress, and then and then if you should, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe there's a time and All place right. just to just to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. That's crazy. What a story. What a two-part story. Yeah. Moving uh, on. All right. This is another awkward moment from a videographer. Joy to us. Okay. It says, I was filming my first wedding with the Canon T3i. Legendary camera. Did you start on the T3i? Right T3i? What, what were T2i. you? T2i. Same. I wanted the T3i because I had the articulating screen. Same. Yeah. I had the Canon T2i. Loved that thing. Okay. First wedding with the Canon T3i on a fly cam. And during the getting ready and the bride's... During the getting ready shots, the bride's brother saw me filming the bride's dog. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea why I was filming that. Suddenly he said, do you film adult content with that? I stood there not knowing what to what say. The, what the, Very awkward. <laughs> yeah, at that point, what the hell? <laughs> you just got to gotta have it in your back pocket and stare at him just blankly and say, yeah, absolutely. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> Yeah, no, what a you weirdo. the dog, look back at him. Absolutely, I do. Yeah. <laughs> where, where did he get that with the... Yeah, what part of filming the dog made him think that? I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time on this one. Sure, let's move on. Because <laughs> I have a lot to say, but I want to I want to keep our G rating on YouTube. So we're going to uh, just head on to the next one. Yeah, keep going. All right. Okay, this is a vendor nightmare story written by a videographer. This is my favorite. We only had a set time of 30 minutes for dinner before we had to immediately hop into toasts. Uh, What a luxury, Mm. first of all. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ten minutes had gone by, and we had not yet gotten our food. I go check with the coordinator, and she heads off to set things out with catering. She came back looking kind of stressed, telling me the head of catering gave her a major attitude. Apparently... They're holding back our food until every single one of the 150 guests get their meal. We couldn't do anything about it, so we're just stuck waiting. At this point, it was 10 minutes until toasts, and I had to talk with the coordinator about possibly pushing the toast back just so we have time to eat, even if it's like for five minutes. Oh, gosh. The coordinator talked to the couple, and thankfully, we were able to push the toast back until we had gotten a chance to eat. We didn't get our food out until a whole 30 minutes after dinner had started. At this point, the couple were already finished their meal. We had to play catch up the rest of the night. Our coverage ended at a certain time, so the coordinator had to spend, had to speed rush some of the events just so we were able to capture them before we leave since the couple didn't want to add on another hour of coverage. I just found it crazy that the head of the catering team yelled at the coordinator and refused to give out vendor meals, which caused the events for the rest of the night to be rushed. I've got some uh, feelings I put about this, this completely on the catering mm. Uh company usually i'm usually i have some like you know biases i'm like you know what actually you're in the wrong but i'm like you know what like 
Well, a few people are blamed. The coordinator for not mentioning that beforehand and the catering company for not obliging. Right. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts? I was <clears throat> yeah, I'm 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 almost in the opposite camp here and I'm I'm a little hesitant okay. because anytime we, we, we say something like this, it ends up being like Lindsay and Cherish from Larev. And we're like, oh yeah, just kidding. Don't take <laughs> yeah. anything we say seriously. Um yeah. yeah, like sure the catering company is at fault, coordinating coordinator's a little bit at fault. But you know, first off, thirty minutes for dinner, that is a luxury. That is great. As you said, that, that that's great. Yeah. Uh, at some point, you got to bite the bullet and and realize like it's it, right. Because it, to me, the story came off as the day didn't get pushed back because of the catering or the coordinator got pushed back because you interjected and said, "Hey, we need our food. We need this and this, or else we can't work," which caused the right. the chain of events, which caused everything to be pushed okay. back. And then they're like, "Oh well, you know." And again, I, I we probably know this videographer, no, not 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 no, pointing fingers. Yeah. Um, at some point, you just got to say, "Okay, like this sucks. We're not going to eat. Good thing I got my protein right. bar. I'm going to go just chug some water, and uh, we're just going to power right. through this wedding. And then let's go freaking to Taco Bell after this and just pig out." Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you absolutely have the right to eat contractually, right? right? But but I do agree. That was my third thing. So three people to blame. <laughs> right. Everybody. <laughs> Everyone's actually to blame here. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, I'll put my first. Bl- I'll put the first blame on the coordinator, mm-hmm. because the coordinator should have set expectations with the catering company. Hey, by the way, this timeline is very tight. The vendors have to eat before the speeches start, so we need vendor meals prepared by this time, before the guests, right? Um, which happens to us all the time. The, ven- the planner has told the catering company, these vendors need to eat first because we're going right from this to speeches, so I need them fed first. Mm-hmm. So usually the coordinator should be you know, not delivering that news to the catering company in the moment. Maybe they did before and the catering company forgot. Who knows? Second, the catering company. Be a team player, and whatever the coordinator tells me to do, I'm going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. So the coordinator right. tells me as a videographer, hey, we're swapping the entire timeline. This is happening next. Go get your lights. I do it, right, without complaint. Right. So if I'm the caterer and the planner comes up to me and says, hey, I need the vendors fed, I would never yell back at them and say, well, we're on a schedule. I'd say, okay, vendor meals go first because I know realistically that three guests are going to eat maybe two minutes later than everyone else, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And you're not serving all 150 people at once. So putting three people ahead of you isn't really going to push you back a whole lot. And then the third person, I do agree with you, Nathan, the videographer here, we just roll with the punches, right? right? There have been many times when the meals don't come out soon enough where we just have to keep filming to keep the schedule because we're not going to let our hunger uh, ruin the timeline that the planners worked hard on. Mm. We'll film. We suck it up. We go get water from the bar, add a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always. Uh, Nate usually will carry protein bars for these exact moments, and then we almost always will go pig out at some fast food place mm. right after the wedding ends. Right. Um, so it's just like, yeah, like you got to be a team player, and you also just have to like, you know, you know what? I'm starving. I've worked hard today, but I'm not going to let that, you know, throw off the entire wedding schedule that these right. people have been planning for months. Um, no, I agree. So, yeah, I think I agree with you, and I also would put blame on everybody else. <laughs> yeah, just kind of messy all around. And um, yeah. for some reason, I just I know that Tanner is going to clip me saying this, and this is what's going to be posted on social media. Might be the stupidest <laughs> take here, <laughs> but it's only 10 hours. Like it's usually a 10 hour day. Like you can go without food for 10 hours. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Suck it up and suck walk it, it off. Up. You're fine. <laughs> Protein bars, chug water. Most of the time you just need water, but yeah, I guarantee that's yeah. going to show up on our Instagram. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, I do. I, I, I do feel like usually like if I'm like, well, I'm starving, I'll just chug go to the water. bar, grab a Coke or just even just like a, just a bunch of water lemon. Mm-hmm. And that usually will get me through the toasts, you know? Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the go-to drink? I'm a Coke guy. You know me. I know I'm, you're a Coke guy. Not all the time, but like if I'm like, if it's a hot day and I'm definitely tired and I'm not, I haven't eaten in a while, I'll usually get a Coke to push myself over the next hour. And then you were shooting with Joe, right? Yeah. Right? From Switchback Stories? Coke and cherries. Coke and cherries. <laughs> or no, no, it was sparkling water, wasn't yeah, we it? Did, yeah. Club soda with... My, my usual go-to most of the time that you also do, we, we do sparkling water with lime. And then I, I've done cherries before too, which claps because oh. eating that cherry oh, gives you a boost of sugar. What are those? What are those really nice cherries called? Maraschino, Mar- 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 Maraschino. We, we should know this. Margot Robbie cherries. Oh. <laughs> Margot Robbie cherries. 
<laughs> I don't know what it's called. Marsh, Mar, Marciana, uh, Mar, Marciana. I don't uh, know. Mariachi. Uh, let me let me let me just oh look gosh, this up. Really nice maraschino, Mar- cherries. That's a dangerous thing to type into Google, actually. Um, maraschino. Okay. Is that what they're called? Anyway. Wait, I'll do a pronunciation. I'll do a pronunciation. Ready, everyone? Yeah. Maraschino. Maraschino. Maraschino cherries. Yeah. A club soda with some maraschino <laughs> cherries. That was way off. That, th- yeah. Those hit. Those hit hard. Yeah. Yeah. But you and I, I feel like we have the same drink, right? We, we like sparkling water with lime oh, or lemon. absolutely. Usually. Hits the spot every yeah. time. Um, yeah. Almost always. Almost club always. soda, whatever. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the next one. What say ye? Okay. Bridezilla's from a videographer. <clears throat> okay. All right. This one opens up pretty boldly. It says, this is my craziest wedding story. However, it's less about any trauma that I experienced, but rather about an unthinkable act that occurred at the wedding. Wow, this is written like a story. Let's begin. That's what it says. (laughs) It starts with, let's begin. I've been been filming weddings for five years now, and this took place at just my second wedding I've ever shot. What a way to get introduced into the industry. First off, I was doing both the photography and videography myself, which being a noob at this point, I thought that was no big deal. But I work hard and I did my best. I shot the wedding, everything went fine. I even received a tip at the end of the night before delivering any content. Everything seems normal. Wow, That's awesome. Okay, fast forward 10 days. I'm nearly done creating a one minute highlight and I'm about to start on the full length edit and I get a text message from the bride and she says, do not edit the content, burn it all, forget it happened. I ask why, (laughs) to which I get no response. I never ever heard from her or the groom again. Later that day, I found out from a friend who attended that the bride cheated with the best man the night before the wedding. So within 10 days (laughs) of the bride saying her I do's, she'd now be saying her I don'ts, and P.S. your best friend is kind of (laughs) fine. So where does this leave me? I got paid in full and tipped and didn't have to edit edit any of the content. Is it wrong to say I considered this a huge win for me? (laughs) No, that's perfectly valid. That's such a toxic way to end Also, also, any thoughts on me still using their footage to promote myself after the bride said to, quote, burn the footage? There was no contract signed at this point in my career. So she has no legal claim, just an emotional one. Thanks, guys. Wow, felt like a Dave Ramsey show there at the end with like giving, you know, advice. Yo, we should do voicemails. Yeah, we should. Hey, we start sending in your voicemails. That'd be hilarious. How do we do that? Uh, we should. We should we you should, can just export wait. it, right? You can we export should, on voicemail. This, on the submission form, allow the ability to upload a file, an audio file. Oh, that'd be if hilarious. You want voice record and then send us a, if you don't mind your voice. Being I mean, heard, it'd, but, it'd just be like a, a Theo Vaughn sort of edit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's anyway. let's do that. Anyway, back um, to the story. The night before the wedding. Surprisingly, this happens often. But the night before the wedding. That's that hurts me to I, even think about. Man, I want to have the bride on the podcast because I just have so many questions. Dude, I would love to dive in deep to this team. I want the best friend on the podcast. Yeah. Man, if I was the groom. With the best friend. Oh, the groom's the Yeah. Dude, I can't imagine. That is, if there was ever one rule of breaking the bro code, that's that supersedes all of right? them. Right? Yeah. What on yeah, earth? Yeah, wait a tick. There had to be alcohol involved, right? I mean, the bride obviously is at fault here, right? One hundred thousand percent. Obviously, full obviously, right? Full accountability to uh, the bride. What a what a sleaze bag! Mm-hmm. I think we can rightfully say. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, as a bro, come on. Yeah. I don't understand how that happens without alcohol. That's so sad. That's so sad. Oh. I So what I would do first is I would go back and watch the footage, and I watch the ceremony again, and just kind of, like, see if I could tell something was up in her mind. Like, during the I do's, the first look mm. of the bridals, like, was, she, was her heart really in it? I think it'd be so much more telling after you know that information right. when you're watching the bridals. Right. Ew, oh, man. Wow. Sleazy. Um, sad. Any thoughts on me still using their footage to promote myself? Uh, I, I would, I would hope it said you're five years into this. I would hope that since this is your second video ever shot, like, I hope you don't need that footage <laughs> to promote yourself. Hopefully it's gotten better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Am I crazy? I would, I would, 
I would, yeah, I would. I would assume use it. it's outdated content for your brand. I, I would hope, yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah, and I, like, ethically, I probably wouldn't do that. I wouldn't either. Yeah, just to just be honest, be a... I, I probably would just feel so icky about it, and I wouldn't want to be in the middle of anything. I would probably just say, you know what? They have a lot of issues. I'm gonna let it die. Yeah. And, and not make a public, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't feel bad using it against her, right? Cause she deserves to not feel good about what she did. But I mean, imagine the the groom is just heartbroken and all of a sudden he he still follows you and he still sees on your page like, oh, what could have been? Yeah. Right? Except for that one glaring issue. Yeah. What could have been? Yeah, just kinda of put yourself in their shoes. Right. If you were the groom, would you want to see that footage right. edited? Yeah. That'd be hard. Yeah. The most I'd ever do, maybe if it's like a like one money shot, is put it in like my website banner. Mm-hmm. But that's like maybe I, I don't know. Five years later, I think you should be fine though. Yeah. Hopefully they've both moved on. That's interesting. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that one. All right. Don't like it. That's so sad. Yeah. I feel like we've had a lot of. Uh, <clears throat> I, I feel like I've heard from other vendors, like just in, when we talked to our friends, stories like this. We haven't had as many submitted on the podcast, but I think I've, we've heard a lot of these stories right. from people who have heard of like the bride or the groom cheating that with a bridal party member that week. Is anyway. yeah, I don't know. Never mind. Crazy. Is cheating that right. normal? Like, is cheating that popular? Uh, not in my world. Right. Same. <laughs> But sometimes, I not. <laughs> but like sometimes, I come across like social media. It's like these reels about, oh, like my boyfriend cheated on me, blah blah blah. We moved on, and it's like, in the comments, I'll say, oh yeah, like move on. My boyfriend cheated on me, cheated on me, and it's just like, is that that common? Do people hey, cheat that much? They'll cheat with you. They'll cheat on you. Exactly. Yeah. No, the the groom dodged a bullet here. Yeah, absolutely. This, That's this terrible. Is is a is a in my opinion a horrible person. Yeah. Especially. The for going night, through with it. And the night before the wedding. And not that we're like playing a gender card here at all. But like again, just as equally bad if the rules were reversed. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Like she she there's no like uh forgiveness no. to me. Well, I mean obviously forgive one day, but like there's no like justifying that action at all. Ever. Dude, that sucks for so it's so easy just to say, I don't love you. Right? Yeah. I'm not gonna marry you tomorrow. Dude, whoever whoever paid for that wedding, that sucks for them. Yeah. Jeez. Ten days later, that's funny. Uh, I mean, I, 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 a win is a win. You got paid for your services without having to do half the work. Yeah. Which, I'd say it's a win for you as well. Yeah, and got tipped. And got tipped. Bad. From some dirty money. Dirty money. All right. <laughs> this is a question to us, Nathan, a discussion oh, question okay. that says... Uh, what is your take on photographers that also do video? Would it be a smart practice for videographers to dabble in photography, or is it only okay for photographers to dabble in video? Um, Define dabble. <laughs> you definitely there's there's absolutely zero harm in doing both. Right. Um, you should actually should. Uh, I think taking up photography as a videographer, you learn a lot about composition and settings and subjects. Um, and just the technical aspect of this business. And I think in, if you're a photographer doing videography, you bring a lot of strengths to the table. Uh, but then you have to kind of learn a lot more about movement, <clears throat> not having the crutch of shooting in raw, um, most of the times. Uh, and then also like a whole new aspect of like mm-hmm. post-production that you're not used to storytelling, music right. selection, licensing, color grading, um, audio cleaning, like so many jobs. So, um, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't, I think the skills are pretty translatable. Whereas like if you learn one, it'll make you a better videographer. If you learn video it'll make you a better photographer. Right. Um, so yeah, why not? Yeah. I think, I mean, sticking to the sense of the word here, like absolutely dabble in both. That's great. I understand dabble is kind of just side hobby or do it for fun. Um, as a videographer, sure. I would love to dabble in photography. What that means to me is I just have my camera. I'm out like just with my wife. We're on vacation. Sure. Let's take some pictures. Like that's dabbling and getting better. Right. What I do think was maybe like the underlying message here was, is it okay for you to do both on a wedding day? Uh, because we do see, you know, some photographers offering some video and like they just capture some clips. 
Um, but I, I, that is no, like, don't do that. Don't, yeah. don't do both photo and video on the same day of the wedding. Yeah. Uh, hire a team. Like if you want to offer photo and video, great, but don't do both of them yourself. Have a dedicated video person, dedicated photo person. Yep. So don't do that. You can only hit one shutter at a time. Right. You know? So it's like you're going to miss something, whether the video will miss it or the photo will miss right. it. Right. Right. Um, and yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna offer both and you have a team, the the biggest thing is that they have to be consistent. You can't have this wildly beautiful video with crappy photos and vice versa. It has to be, and it's hard to be consistent in those things, especially in one company. Um, and that's why I feel like usually with the photo video duos, their husband and, husbands and wives uh, or partners, because they they live together, they work together, they have the same style, the same taste, they shoot the same, they work together the same. And that's why their photos and videos are consistent and cohesive versus if like you were just hire somebody to, to outsource the photo. Yeah. It's like, well, they might not shoot the way you shoot. And right. you want, if it's under your brand, you want them both to match. Yeah. No, I agree. But yeah. Learn, Dabble. learn photography. Sure. I would love to learn photography. Absolutely. It's something, something that I suck at, but I would love to, love to learn that. I also just like never, I haven't had like a photo camera for two years. Yeah. So I finally do now. So yeah, finally. Yeah. All right. Shall we top it off with the final one? Okay, this one is videographer kind of. miscellaneous says Nate and Jake. I started listening to the podcast last month and I love this. You guys actually encouraged me to finish the bear after taking a brief pause on the show. So thank you for that. Let's Which, go. yeah, if you haven't watched the bear, stop listening to us. Fantastic show. Definitely go watch the bear. It's a lot more. Uh, Bro, bang I for saw your a buck. guy at the gym yesterday who looked just like Jeremy Allen White. Really? Yeah, it looked just like him. Had like the the, the face, the, the hair, the muscles. Are we talking Jeremy Allen White in The Bear or Jeremy Allen White in Iron Claw? Uh, the Bear. <sighs> Love. Well, The Bear. Nice. Well, either way. No, he definitely had the Iron Claw hair, actually. Mm. <laughs> he had a freaking <laughs> mop on his head. <laughs> yeah. but no, either way. Good. But I, was like, I looked at him, I was like, that's Jeremy Allen White. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so thank, Great show. thank you guys for that. I have a little bit of a hot take among videographers. We'd love to hear it. So I rebranded my website recently and I had to do some research on what was actually right. A lot of videographers and some photographers label their packages as precious metals. <laughs> bronze, silver, gold, etc. Oh boy. Now I'm not a scientist, but according to the periodic table, bronze is not an element. Oh my gosh. Well, he said he had to do some research. So instantly the hot okay. take valid validity goes down a little bit because you know he just had to Google it. Here we go. If he knew this off or he or she knew this off the dome. You know, respectable. But, uh, okay, bronze is not an element. That's an alloy of a few different metals. <laughs> Silver is labeled as 47, platinum 78, gold is 79. Fun fact, they're numbered by the amount of protons each atom has. So while looking into this... That is pretty fun. <laughs> yippee! I found that the music industry has it wrong also. To be certified gold is 500,000 oh units and certified platinum is 1 million. Please read this on the podcast and tell everyone that does this that they are wrong. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this. By the way, listening to the podcast is motivating me in so many ways that I needed hearing right. about your ups and downs to accept and move on from some of my insecurities and imposter syndrome. So genuinely, thank you. And I'll always look forward to the podcast. You're welcome, but let's, right. let's ignoring dissect your this. Last, <laughs> yeah. Ignoring your last kind sentence there, uh, <laughs> climb off your high horse, what Jimmy Neutron. Nobody actually cares about alloys, bronze, and metals, and precious things. All right? It's not that deep. It's, 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 I've said it once to you before, Jake. It's based off the melting point, not the periodic table. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, this guy doesn't know how. Are you talking about? Who are you talking you and, to? Is this your story? I submitted this. That's why. This I, is Nate trying to nicely bring it up to me that we shouldn't name our packages bronze over gold, but he didn't want I to confront me about it directly. And I had no other and way. So he used some Wikipedia copy and paste <laughs> alloy metal thing from a Jim and Neutron episode, thinking that would sway me. Well, fun fact: I don't Man, even call our packages I'm gonna, gold and silver. I'm gonna and start bronze. doing that. Anything I want changed in the business, I'll just submit a non anonymously and just like pretend yeah. I'm someone else. Be like, hey, you guys should do this. <laughs> We're just gonna. It's it's hey, uh, just a quick story I want to submit. Um, our color, I mean, your colors are kind so of interesting. The colors are <laughs> maybe we should use this LUT pack. Maybe, maybe the other one, 50%. Uh, yeah. No, I got a, I got a, oh I got a, I got a bone to pick with this person. I'm assuming yeah. it's a guy. Nathan, 
I'm assuming Pick it's a guy. Bone. I'm assuming it's a guy. You know how we always say like we we know if it's a guy or a girl by the way they write. Yeah, bone this, this guy. Sounds like I mean, <laughs> pick the bone. <laughs> I'm picking the bone here. Sorry. All right, Mr. Neutron. If you really dissected this and you're like, oh, like it's not on the the, the periodic table or, or so forth, I can't help but notice this was Uh-oh. addressed Nate and Jake. Why was I first? Because it should be alphabetical. Jake and Nate. Boom. What are you doing? That's a reach. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to back you up here as my partner, but that's a reach. <laughs> come on. That was a valid really, I was really trying to, to be in your corner no, 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 here. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's, he's so technical, creed, right? But, he's so technical oh. about this periodic table stuff. He should at least if respect the alphabetical order and say Jake and Nate. Well, if I may, I Go think ahead. you and our beautiful dynamic duo ship, you definitely come across as, you know, the, uh, the Ivy Leaguer <sighs> college graduate uh Mm. Uh, nerd. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I kind of come across more as like the suave, mysterious, <laughs> the suave, sexy, just ten out of ten, like <laughs> just the lady killer, <laughs> the lady killer. <laughs> just pulling Michael Scott here, right, right, Kenzie. No, I was just, no, I can't even say the straight face. Uh, I think he know. Um, I'm actually just an oh, idiot yeah, maybe. that this will go way over my head, and he was really just wanting to tell you this. Maybe. Because he knew Jake wouldn't understand it. No, no. Well, I remember my days in, but, in Chem But joke's on you, yeah, joke's on Jimmy you. Neutron. I do understand it. And this is a... a <laughs> and, and my favorite part is that you're calling this... Uh, let me see. Wait. Wait. I want to find the sentence. I want to quote it correctly. Okay. I have a little bit of a hot take among videographers. Mm. I would argue that this is a ice cold take. Nobody no one can. in their life... <laughs> is discussing this as a take and everyone's like wow that's actually a crazy (laughs) odd take no one's like out there debating this arguing for it there's not a uh a proton versus neutron platinum versus gold (laughs) fan club page that we should all be you know weighing in on uh this is just you uh being wild and i freaking love it i love it yeah but uh more more of these takes even though though we have no idea what to say uh well I'm probably I'm probably being so rude. I don't mean it. No, yeah, Kinda. honestly, we we would hang out with you. Like you, you're in our tribe. You, you sound like a good dude. Yeah, low key you would fit <laughs> in very key, well. With absolutely, yeah. We we do have a couple of spots opening here soon. Sam and Dallin are. I'm actually a closet nerd, <laughs> and everything you're saying are things that I would actually love to discuss <laughs> I, over a game of Settlers of Catan. So, <laughs> where I sell ore and sheep and brick. And he wins every time. Uh, yeah, while Sam, because so, Sam uh, sabotages the whole freaking crew trying to build the longest road. Yeah, he sucks. So that's why Sam's on his way out. So yeah, we'll have uh, an opening here soon if you're available well, Wednesday our, nights for Catan. Yeah, <laughs> at our last workshop, I forget who they were. Two of the two of the yeah. attendees came up to me and said, "I know this is really nerdy, but we like, we do like a Dungeons and Dragons oh, club, yeah. and they invited me to it." But I wanted to like stop them and say, because like I know it's like kind of nerdy, but I was like, stop what you're stop saying. Right there. Let me stop you. I would be super into that. <laughs> I'm honored to be invited. <laughs> no, but I, uh, but 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 the uh, periodic table is where I draw the line. Yeah. No, that... My my extent of knowledge on the periodic table starts and ends with Breaking Bad. Mm. Great show. And that's it. I know I know the first few letters based on the periodic table and that because of the end and opening credits, but that's really all. I've, I've always wanted to ask whoever put together like the opening titles of Breaking Bad with every single person that it shows on the screen, they have some element that perfectly fits their name. You know how it highlights the two characters? Yeah. Is are, are, I, I've never, I, I could do the research myself and see if, if they actually match up. But what, what are the odds that every single person has some sort of element that matches their name? Probably high, right? Because like, how many combinations of... Jake, yeah, like, does Jake boy. have A K K K E, Weisler? I don't know. Like, does Jake Weisler? Maybe like a J or an A C or C O for Jacob. What is C O? But also, you have to you have to keep in mind that you have like two names to. to it's true. You got a first and last, yeah. Of nailing a first and last name. Yeah. There are no J's on the periodic table. I know. There's no J's. There's no. There's A K is not one. Oh no, dude. Eighty nine, Jacob. It would be A C. Ah, it would be Jacob. It wouldn't be and Jake. And then yours would be 11, N-A. Yeah, wow. But that that's a bit of a nuance there. So y- for you, your name is Jacob I Weisler. They would have to... Jake. Oh, right, right. You go by Jake Weisler, but they would have to do your full name, Jacob. Because is there, is there anything for your last name? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, 
Is there E R? Uh, e E I or. Oh yeah, just they could literally just do S. There's an S. Oh, that's the <laughs> cop out. Okay. Yeah, and there's also just uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, impressive. I, you probably could. You probably find every single. Yeah, there's an E S. Yeah, I have to do Jacob if I wanted my first name. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Fascinating. Um, <clears throat> oh, there's also a CO for Jacob. Yeah, I was what I was about to say. I think there had to be a CO. Um, Jacob, may I impart a little bit of my uh, my thinking? T E for T hen. Oh, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this. unless you want to keep going. No, I'm just a big nerd. Okay. <laughs> no, I uh, I don't know why I started thinking of this, <clears throat> but um, heated controversy is no uh, controversy is no stranger in the boys group chat. Correct. We we have some some heated controversy, uh, heated chats sometimes. Okay. Okay. And please, um, please be gentle on me. No, I'm about to say, and we please all, don't bring receipts. No. <laughs> and I hope you're hungry. Please don't leak the cod chat for nothing. Shows all the screen recordings of just the past yeah. day. No, no. So uh, we all know who the culprit is, and it's not you. Okay. Uh, the the one who really instigates all of us to just be like. Are you, you are you kidding? No, 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 no. It's not me. It's not you. And it's not Dallin. Okay. There's one person who always just gets us all rallied up. And for a while... Are we about to talk about the flat earth? No, no, no. no. Well, yes, kind okay. of, kind of, kind of. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's Samuel. It's Samuel. Yes. Samuel Hansen. Follow him on Instagram. He doesn't post. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to say is that... Follow him on Instagram. He never posts. <laughs> so let me... Let me... <laughs> I'm trying to formulate as I'm, as I'm talking to you. This is my first time actually making it into words. Um, Sam has argued with me. He's argued with you. We've all argued. And usually it's about things. And this is, this is what I'm, uh, I'm trying to come up with a name for it. But I'm just calling it the, uh, the conspiracy complex. Okay. And the idea is that people will take these, these arguments and it'll be something pointless. Okay but it only goes to serve them if they are right. If they're wrong, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing, okay? Uh, they, in, in other words, they, they, they just like hedge their bets, okay? So for example, okay. uh, the flat earth, okay? Let's say someone says, hey, there's- Our friend Sam, by the, by way, the way, has recently been brainwashed to believe that the earth is flat. Right. And that, that our entire earth, uh, the North Pole is the center of the map and it's spread out so that the, <laughs> there's an ice wall that surrounds the entire border. And then on the other side of the ice wall is the drop off, which <laughs> leads to off. outer space. <laughs> so why don't we just fry them up now and serve them with chips? Uh, great right, quote, so. by the way, great insert. Go on. Um, so okay. with any of these huge, and this is going to tie back into this uh, periodic table thing. Okay. I promise. Beautiful. But um, with any of these controversial takes that are just pretty much pointless, uh, people will be so animate about them. They'll be so all their chips are in because if they are right, it makes them look like the smartest person on the world, like in, in the world. Like they can say, I told you so. Right, you should have listened to me. Because they're the minority. Right. Right. You should have listened to me. I was telling you that like flat, the earth was flat or like the. I've been saying right, this for years. Right, right, right. Just like the most weird take that n doesn't even matter. Okay. And if they are wrong, if they are proven without a shadow of a doubt to be wrong, they can't deny it. Nothing happens. The earth just keeps going around. It's just at the end of the day, you wake up the next morning. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess the earth was a sphere. And they usually don't like accept right. your uh, proof. It's usually more of like a, huh, interesting. Yeah, inter But let's say like it was 100% proven that it was a sphere. That We're yeah. just using flat earth as an example here. Uh, we can, there's any, pick a conspiracy, which, any, which any theory. It has been proven. Okay. Sure. Um, but if you prove them wrong, nothing changes. The earth is still the same. Like life to life, day to day is just the exact same. Whereas if okay. they would have been proven right, all of a sudden like life is in chaos. So they're hedging their bets with all their chips in one corner saying, if I'm right, I'm the smartest person on earth. But like, oh, if I'm proven wrong, oh, huh, whoopsie, like scratching my head. Um, yeah. No one's going to talk about it because who's going to actually go up and some to someone and be like, ha, like you idiot. You thought it was flat. It's like, no, we're just going to go about our lives. Nothing happened. Um, right. And, and the reason I, I bring this up, okay, is because I had a friend in college okay. who would always bet when people would get married, like after the first date, he's like, hey, I guarantee those two are getting married. And when they got married, he'd be like, I freaking told you, I'm a genius, I'm a prophet. 
But when they break up, no one's going to be like three years later. Hey, remember when you right? Bet? I was like, hey, you I, said they were going to get married, and they didn't. This take right here, no one cares. this take was one of those takes. If for some reason we could prove something about this periodic table, this person would be a genius. Everyone would tout this genius, but it's not true. So it's just going to be like, who's going to go up and be like, hey, uh, what a weird take. <laughs> You're wrong. Nothing's well, going to happen. Well, this take is it's backed by science, isn't it? Do we, do, <laughs> I do guess, we fact check his numbers I guess, here? <laughs> I guess we're just taking that silver is labeled 47 as his word here. But it's just a weird well, take. Well, I think what you're trying to say is that like because he's proved the industry wrong, no one cares. Ex well, you can't prove it wrong, you know. Like I e I don't care. Right, that, no one cares. The the tier system doesn't <laughs> is doesn't make sense on the periodic table. I'm like I don't care. Right, it's it's a it's an I don't care take. But if we could make it in a world where it would just be a, a absolutely right or absolutely wrong, yeah, it just it just doesn't matter. Who cares? When you think of bronze, what do you think of? I I mean, I think of bronze as the the lower tier, third place. I know this is wrong, but I think of a penny. I know it's a copper, but I think of a penny. I think, I, I mean... Because they look alike. It, my, my counter argument, I can't believe we're still spending this much time on this periodic table take. <laughs> but could the argument... Turns out we are Jimmy Neutron. Could the argument not be made that it's going off of like Olympic medals, the podium, first, second, third place, bronze, silver, gold? Oh, so he's, go, he's declaring war on the entire award system in general. I guess so, against the system. But I'm going by the Olympic wow. system. First, second, yeah, third. I go off. Okay, yeah. I didn't even talk about the Olympic system. I don't even know what platinum is, actually. I don't even know either. Like, gun to my head, don't know what platinum is. I don't know either. Can we can we just quickly talk about Flat Earth for just a second? Sure. I'm going to let you take the mic because I just don't I don't even want to. It seems like I you've watched more you TikToks as a <laughs> than I yeah. have. I will love you as a human being. I think the flat earth bit, I don't know if it's a joke that everyone's just in on or if that community is dead serious, but I think if you truly believe that you are one of the stupidest brainwashed human beings on this, on this spherical planet. And let me just go to say, cause I can prove this. Not that I need to right? the whole argument of like, if I present you with a dollar and quarters, you know, this argument, no, it's not my job to prove to you that that's a dollar. It's your job to prove that it's not a dollar, right? Right. If I give you four nickels or four quarters, excuse me, and say this is a dollar, and you say, no, it's not, I don't have to sit there and count and show you the value. You have to tell me why it's not. And flat earthers, these moronic idiots, have yet to refute the proof, the truth and knowledge of our spherical globe we live on <laughs> with anything worthwhile that that that, that gives a, a, even a, a, a breath of hope into their theories. Especially the fact that who discovered the Earth was round uh, centuries ago, uh, back in like, what, the, what year was it? 1492 and 1492, Chris Cross. Point being, centuries ago. Because everyone's like in Sam. He's always like, well, our government's lying to us ever <laughs> since Apollo. I'm like, okay, well, here's a news flash for you. Hundreds of thousands. The United States government wasn't the people, weren't the people who invented <laughs> that the earth was a sphere. So if you, if you want to use that argument, you have to go and back to the, I think it was it the Romans. I should know more about this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know. And say like We're going that, deep. They can, that they create this conspiracy Back before technology and social media were a thing, and that has somehow survived across the world. You know, that's that's my big argument. Not to mention, like, okay, well, what casts a spherical moon or casts a spherical shot on the moon? Or, okay, why are other planets spheres and, and we're not? Also, why does your perspective change when you get higher up in altitude? Like, anyway, I just, I, I, I genuinely, I tweeted about this the other day or I uh, threaded, th threaded Thread. about this the other day. That I don't, I truly don't know if the flat Earth community is doing one big bit. And they're all in on it. Yeah, like how everyone's like, you know, praises Lizzo for being talented. I don't know if like people are like if it's like genuine, <laughs> or if we're all just like in on it. <laughs> and the, and the, the the joke is to argue about it. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. No, I mean, and I and I hey, I bob to Lizzo songs. I mean, do you still even after? 
she no. was proven to be like no. a terrible person. But, no. Um, no, but I but some of her songs definitely got me got me uh, got me bopping. I, never, I, I'm just saying I'm not like well, a I'm not see, a proactive hater of I'm, her. I'm just saying like I don't I don't know if we're all like doing a joke or if it's like serious. I uh, see I in this past year I've made a very very conscious effort to just stay away from conspiracy theories. I just I for me personally if mm-hmm. you want to do it like go ahead absolutely. Um, but for me, I remember like, I would just get so worked up trying to argue with someone who is already just believing in a conspiracy because they will never in their life be proven wrong because in their mind, they have already seen the light. They were one of these people that believed in, you know, the moon landing. They did believe in the, whatever, the earth being a sphere. And they feel like they've woken up. And they woke up. So, so, so they're never going to come back. So it's just a waste of time to try to argue with a conspiracy theorist. And that's where I would just have so much like grief. And I would actually like get heated because it's just like, you just want to shake them and be like, like, stop talking. Listen to yourself. Yeah. It's impossible to argue with somebody when logic isn't a factor. Right. And so, and they'll always label themselves as like a critical thinker or a free thinker when really all they're all they're good at is just following links i mean we live in the day of information or misinformation right so people who are doing the research are just following links all they're doing they're just oh. they're just clicking oh the irony deep. of them calling us brainwashed <laughs> right for believing the social norms yeah and then for them to be like but then i'm like but you're brainwashed and it always always comes back to if if at the end of the discussion i just say hey listen like i just choose not to believe in it i just don't think it is a thing i don't think we're being lied to about this or this it always in one way or another comes back to well you are just a sheep you are following what people yeah. tell you to follow and, and and that to me is just someone who's trying to just uh virtue signal for a lack of lack of a better yeah, word they make it a moral then they make it like a moral debate right they're right? they're, they're, they're just trying it's to no longer about facts it's about it, it's now a personal vendetta, right? And they're just trying to signal that they are like a thinker. They're smart. They've thought about things that you haven't, which means they are smarter than you. And it's like, really, no. Maybe you've just wasted a lot of time thinking about things that don't matter. Because at the end of the day, uh, does it matter if the 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 sphere is not a sphere and it's flat? Like, who cares? Honestly, like I just don't argue about those anymore, and I don't put any of my attention to it. And so yeah. with that knowledge, all I know about Flat Earth is that it started as a joke. 100%. Like, right. it started as a joke. Right. And then some people started taking to it. Bought into it. Right. Oh, my God. These gosh. are the people that are buying into... That's not proof enough. Right. Right. These are the same people Something that are buying into funny. these And like then a few idiots were like, hold on, yeah, actually. Hang on. And then everyone's like, wait, okay. And then the age of the internet just, of course, makes it worse. And and I don't know. How many flat earthers are there, actually? But the, uh, the you know, social media makes it seem like there are a true. million of them. Well, that's my next more. point. We have given, we have given a podium to morons. We've made very bad people rich. Maybe not bad. Uh, how many of, yeah. the how many of you people. guys, and maybe it's because we're you know, quote unquote, influencers and educators in the space. So we're more prone to people giving us unfiltered opinions about personal things. How many of you guys have ever received a hateful comment? And then you look at their profile and you realize they're not real. Mm -hmm. Or they're just some, if you saw them in the street, you would never care about their opinion. You'd feel bad for them. (laughs) I know for a fact, I walk into the average airport or the average gas station and if any single one of those people were to insult me to my face, I would look th- at them, not being judgy here, I would, I'm just saying, I would look at them and say, you know what, I don't value your opinion. Mm-mm. But for some reason, when it's behind this vague, mysterious wall of social media, it can destroy you. Mm-hmm. And it's destroyed me before. I could get 100 nice comments on the video and one bad one comes in, and I'm so focused on it until I go to their page, I'm like, oh, you're not actually real. There's nothing out there about you. You're you're a, you're a nobody, right? And I'm trying to be a somebody, right? And you're 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 projecting that your insecurities that you're a nobody, because right. if you were somebody, you wouldn't be doing this. Those people, we've given them a platform and we've allowed them to congregate, which is scary. Yeah. And we've allowed them to, in the spirit of free speech, which I agree with, we've allowed them to create followings around stupid ideas, stupidity. Just community. easy, easy and clicks. They have, they, and they attract the true sheep, mm-hmm. the people who truly will follow whatever's trending. Right. Which is sad. Which is and sad. Sam, if you're listening, which I know you don't because we're an hour in and I know your attention span is not that long, <laughs> but I'll send you this clip personally. 
you my friend, <laughs> in your desperate attempt to be a critical thinker and a lion, have sadly become a sheep. You're very good at TikTok. In the world, though. in the realm of flat earth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I cannot believe this periodic table thing got us all the way here. <laughs> what I a what a road title is gonna be called is the Bear Earth Boobs <laughs> and Flat Earth. <laughs> the, <laughs> bride's boobs and is the earth flat? Wait, 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 uh, wait, no, no, we, say that no, no, we can we can run with this. Uh um Oh you're you're kind of playing play, to the round. Playing to the round the yes, 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 okay. yes. I'm playing okay. to the roundness here. We'll think of something. Of 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 spheres and bodies. I don't know. We'll, we'll, hmm. That was horrible. We'll think of it. Anyway, guys. Um, the earth might be flat. Say, if you're, if you're, <laughs> but this bride wasn't. If you're, uh, <laughs> if you're calling your packages bronze, <laughs> that's actually crazy. That's a good one, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Did you say the earth was flat, but the bride wasn't? I said wasn't? The, the earth may be flat, but this bride was not. Episode 32, coming out soon. <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, all to say, if you're calling your packages bronze, silver, and gold, you're fine. keep doing yeah, it. Yeah, you're fine. Who cares? Keep doing it. In fact, I want to, maybe this we'll switch ours back. You. Maybe you should call your packages flat, dome, <laughs> spherical. Uh, <laughs> just see what happens. Well, I guess people can see that if if you just mention any conspiracy, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk. I guess. I get see you're right. I get triggered, dude. It's I just so, so easy. easily triggered by. I get so easily triggered by stupidity. Yeah. Maybe that's a good spot to rack it up. Ra- stupid little <laughs> idiot. <laughs> maybe it's a good. Maybe there's a good spot to uh, wrap it up, Jacob. What do you say? Yeah. Why not? All right, guys. Yeah. Why not? Well, that does it for this episode. Uh, this was definitely a fun one. Not the way I saw it going, but happy to have yeah. you here if you're still here. <laughs> so check the show notes for. Um, you know anything that we have coming up on the horizon subscribe to the runaway club the official newsletter of runaway vows and we have something special coming up on monday we are going to be launching a runaway content days runaway workshop uh in new york this fall so if you want to be notified of that check the links below and we'll see you next week